three, two. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. This week, we are going to start with something different, a Where Are They Now series. And so really, it's what I'm focusing on is bringing on some folk, former guests to really highlight what they've been doing since the podcast. Now, Stephen, Stephen Christensen is a really focusing on the AI world as well as a medical student at the same time. He's kind of doing everything at the same time. So what's going on, boss? How have you been? How has the world treated you since the podcast? Uh, it's been really interesting, I would say. Um, you know, I got into medical school because I think uh, last time I was like on the podcast in person, right? It's so, you know, since then, um, got into medical school, uh, things have been like really picking up in like the creative and tech space, which has been really interesting, um, it, including like, you know, all the AR stuff, all the AI stuff, uh, it's everything in general, like it's, it's, it's kind of taking on a life of its own. And then uh, more importantly, um, you know, just trying to get through like board exams and do like the regular medical school stuff and like taking care of myself and, and doing all that stuff. So, uh, it's, so it, it's, um, you know, each day has its new challenges, but overall, I think I'm like getting closer towards that goal of like being a physician that can do all these other things on the side that hopefully informs my, uh, you know, my practice and, you know, get out of debt and, you know, d take vacations and, you know, buy an electric vehicle and all that stuff, right? Like, <laughs> just, just uh, you know, living the, trying to live the American dream as best as I can, right? So. <laughs> now let's, let's talk a little bit about these other, other side kind of adventures. You mentioned, you know, the AI space, uh, Eltopia Studios has been doing great. And, and, but you've been doing a bunch of other side projects. Tell us, tell for the folks that may have not listened to that first episode, give us a little background and then tell us what you have been doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, um, on the side, you know, when I'm not studying and all that, uh, prior to medical school, I was a like VFX artist and a comic book illustrator. Um, and I was like a 2d and 3d animator. Right. And so, uh, and so those are just sort of like my, uh, those are like the talents that I had. Um, and it was a matter of just trying to figure out how to apply those, uh, those skills and those interests to, uh, to work either for clients or my, for myself. Right. And so one of those was, uh, being able to start Iltopia studios, which is pretty much a publishing company that allows me to like publish on my comics and, and, you know, do conventions and all that stuff. And then the, uh, and then, from there, you know, posting stuff on YouTube and uh, getting freelance work as a as an animator and a comic book illustrator and just sort of like an overall creative, you know, people that want to have, um, you know, any sort of like educational or entertainment experiences that they could use to promote their products or uh, promote their music or anything like that, they would essentially reach out to me uh, or people like me uh, to do that. Since, you know, the pandemic, obviously, I, uh, you know, got deeper into like the more emerging tech side. And so being able to utilize my skills within uh, more of an emerging tech area of augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, and, uh, and not only like streamlining my process, but like showing proof of concept of what the, what the technology is capable of. Uh, you know, in the future for, for broader users. Right. And so, uh, and so people thinking about, you know, you, because of like Pokemon go and all these other sort of trendy things that have come out. Um, I think it's informed not only my work, but also helped me, you know, further the conversation about like how that technology can and cannot be used, uh, you know, from, you know, the gimmicky stuff to like things that actually have an impact. And, uh, I think for me, at least, uh, being able to integrate that within books and printing uh, to, you know, lower costs, uh, make the uh, the products that you produce more valuable and also increase the engagement within the product so that they, you know, take more away from the products, especially compared to other stuff or um, or just having a, a deeper connection to the uh, to the work in and of itself. Right. And so I, I like to think of it as like, you know, if you have a book, you know, uh, what I do is I create books or take books, take things that uh, appeal to a certain amount of senses 
you know, like human senses, sort of like, you know, touch, uh, see, hear, all that stuff. And I increase the amount of senses that are incorporated into that experience. And so, uh, and so for a book, you know, a comic book that I come out with, uh, you know, normally you could touch it and you could, you know, have that tactile experience, but more importantly, you're able to read it. And so you're able to like, see, like, look at it visually, uh, you know, my, I have the ability to add more sensory, uh, sensory, you know, experiences to that, to where, you know, I could add audio to the book so you could listen to it, uh, and sort of have that like audio book or like a story time experience that, that follows the words you can uh you can integrate you know depth and motion into it and so being able to uh you know give people the opportunity to you know move the products and then be able to explore the environments around it by uh by movement and uh active engagement and then uh and then more importantly uh being able to really just like provide people with a uh a deeper connection with uh with fostering exploration and so something that exists right like say you're on a playground you know and you want to you know go on a scavenger hunt you know you could incorporate those elements that you would normally have in a scavenger hunt within a storytelling experience or an educational experience without having to pay thousands of dollars for it right you know and so having a uh, having a you know a book and then having a phone which everybody has at this point and then uh, and then utilizing the technology that's quite literally in our pocket to uh, unlock experiences that would have otherwise cost you, you know, a significant amount. And so, uh, and so it's a lot of, it's a lot of like, you know, sort of philosoph philosophical, like exploration of, of these types of things that I get to like play around with in like my, you know, in my leisure. Uh, and then people like take it seriously because they're like, oh my gosh, this is high level. I'm like, sure. You know, but like, I'm just sort of enjoying my time. Uh, but then really just sort of like uh, having the opportunity to kind of pave the way for people that come after me, which is also kind of weird. Like it, it's kind of a weird feeling uh, because, you know, I'm probably one of the only medical students that is um, that is asked to speak at conference, like international conferences. Right. And on things that are unrelated to medicine. And I have the opportunity to integrate, you know, my my understanding of medicine or how it could be applied to medicine in those spaces because I have that platform. Um, does it come with the money yet? Uh, no, but like it does come with opportunities. And I think the opportunities being that I am a student, uh, you know, it's a lot, it's really expensive to get an opportunity. And so, uh, and so I could afford to, um, you know, forego the payments till later uh, so that I have the opportunities that provides me with more opportunities for payments in the future. And so, uh, and so it's, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been, you know, it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot to handle sometimes. Um, and I always have to make sure to drink my water and, and stretch and, and just sort of take care of myself. But, uh, but it's, you know, I, I, this is the journey that I think I've, uh, been longing to, to sort of be on and to finally be here. It's, it's challenging in more ways than I expected, but, uh, but it was like really, really fulfilling. You know, what's interesting is I'm, I'm realizing this kind of common theme. One of the things you're kind of talking about with your AI services is trying to improve the end user experience by sensorization, providing more sensors, uh, providing, uh, but not only that, paving the way for the next generation of creators to, for them to see what they're able to create and think outside the box. And then you're also a provider. You know, it seems like your your core focus is constantly thriving to helping people. You're you're attending conferences and speaking about what you're doing and how you're able to integrate this AI with healthcare. Where does that passion come from? The passion to help people. Um, I don't know. I think uh, you know, I think uh it's just more of a cultural thing. I think uh me having the like traditional black experience in America, uh you know, where, um, you know, I, I went to, I got opportunities by virtue of being a good athlete. And then uh, within that space and uh, navigating that space to get to college and then, you know, trying to go to the pros and then that really fizzling out and all that. Uh, there's always a, there's always a, a, an aspect of the success that, you know, when you get to that next level that you want to kind of pay it forward by, you know, um, by doing the things that those did before you to help inspire you to get down that journey, right? And so for me, it was like, you know, once I got to college, 
then I immediately graduated from, you know, like getting trained by guys that uh that went to the next level to training people that are trying to get to that next level, right? And then also training myself, but like there was just this added, there is this added responsibility that you have to uh you have to be a mentor and you have to uh sort of be a positive role model for people to follow. Um and Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't, but like, you know, it, it's a it's a way to sort of hold you accountable to uh not only the craft and what you uh you know, the goals that you had, but also to your community as a whole. Because, you know, for better or for worse, you know, like we're sort of um, you know, respective stewards of those ideals that our community holds, right? And uh and I getting into medical school and uh seeing all that, it it essentially just like that, that concept just like magnified, right? Like exponentially, like overnight, like once I got into medical school, it was just like, oh, you know, like, you know, whether I like it or not, you know, people are going to ask me to like, you know, uh, mentor, mentor them or help them get through the, through things or, you know, seek advice or whatever, even if I feel I'm not qualified to do that, right? Like it just sort of comes with that responsibility. And so, uh, and so for me, it's, it's been more of a, uh, been more of a, a realization that like, it's not going anywhere. And uh, regardless of what area that I go into, um, whether it's innovative or not, it's not going anywhere. And so it's best for me to lean into it so that I, you know, could sort of get used to it and, and find ways to just like impact people's lives for the, for the better. Uh, whether that is just inspiring somebody to just open up a sketchbook at the end of a stressful day and just like work on ideas that can turn into something or turn into nothing or just, you know, avoiding like helping people, uh, you know, advising people to just avoid the nonsense, nonsense that kind of just comes with life so that you could study and do well on an exam, right? Like those things are, uh, you know, for me, those things are, it's like two sides of the same coin because like I deal with that every day you know, both of those things every single day. And I try to uh, find a way to like find balance so that I don't like lose myself in the process. And so, uh, you know, and then I, I, I get to meet a lot of people and, you know, and, and hopefully sell a lot of books and, you know, sort of not have to pinch pennies together and stuff like that. And so it's a, it's, a, you know, for me, it's like all part of the journey and it's something that I expect. You know, you, one of the things you mentioned is the importance of mentorships and, and being a mentor and a mentee. Have you had some mentors? And if so, what have, what are some of the things the mentors have taught you that helped being successful today? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say, uh, you know, for me, like I am a very like, I take pride in like being impressionable and I take pride in like trying to build relationships with people. And mainly because that is what is, that's what has helped me get to the point that I am today, right? Like I, for better or for worse, once I finished playing football, I was kind of in a, I was kind of in, in an area of like, you know, uncharted territory for me, right? Like, cause most of my, like, you know, most of my family and everybody was in sports and uh, for better or for worse, like they weren't in entertainment and they weren't in, uh, weren't in medicine, two of the areas that I ended up pursuing, right? And so when it came to just like, oh yeah, like how do I get into medical school, right? Like I actually had to just like go out and just like meet people that have done that and know better and uh, and then build relationships with them and then they like helped me, right? And, uh, and throughout that process, it, it's, uh, I think some of the things that have been reaffirmed are just like, you know, one that like, as long as you don't give up, things work out. Like regardless of how things turn out in the immediate future, the in the long term, as long as you don't give up, like and they don't and they tell you no multiple times, like you just keep showing up and you keep doing the things until like you reach that status, right? Like just don't give up. And then two, it's uh, you know, like things aren't going to work out the way you expect it, but the, it, everything works out in the end like it and and i think it piggybacks off of like the first thing of just like don't give up because you know that that's pretty much what stops people's progress in general they get beat down they get worn out and then after a while just like you know there's a there's a breaking point and then they they go on to do something else right you're either going to die or you're going to get to your goal 
right? Like, and, and one is going to happen, you know, both will happen, but it's just a matter of which one is going to happen first, right? And so, uh, and so though, like those two things have just like stood out to me uh, across all the different men mentors that I had. Um, I think uh, one thing has been very clear and they, and they often reaffirm it is that like, you know, I, I, I attribute it to just being hard headed and just like wanting to do what I want to do. Right. But like every time I like catch up with all my mentors and stuff like that, it's just reaffirming that like, I just, I stuck to it. I was accountable to myself and I, and I stuck to what I said I was going to do until it happened. And, uh, and then we get to like joke around about it and all that stuff. And throughout that process, it sucks, right? Like it, it's hard. It's difficult. You know, I'm going through it right now with like trying to, you know, pass this board exam and, and all that stuff. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of mental hurdles, but for the most part, it's like, I'm going to get through it. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. I just got to keep grinding away. Like I've done with everything else and take care of myself and, you know, and prioritize things. Cause like there's other things that I want to do that I can't do to the extent that I want to, because I have to focus on these priorities. And so it, it's, uh, and so it, it's, um, you know, I think for, for at least like my mentors, um, it's, you know, I, I, I make it a point to just like tell them what I'm going to do. And then like, they just, you know, it, it gives them something to just like follow and track and, and provide me with support however they can. Yeah. You know, I think, I think there's a misconception sometimes with, um, individuals going into the physician space that it's not an entrepreneurial journey, which it truly is. Uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned, Stephen, is um, going out to conferences, writing a book. You know, being a first author in in research papers is kind of like the creme de la creme when you're thinking of research. You know, if you if you become the first author of a paper, that means you were kind of the one that discovered that thing, right? You, you were the one. Uh, now, t tell us about like what what is your goal? What is you, you're talked about going through conferences and discussing conferences. You talked about writing a book. You talk about healthcare. What is Stephen's final entrepreneurial journey look like? What does what does that sunset look like? Honestly, it, it's uh, so I'm always like pinching myself when I uh, when I think about like my interest in going to medicine, right? Because my interest in going into medicine was to get away from the entrepreneurial freelance space. Right. Like that was literally what I decided to do. And that's why I chose medicine. Jokes on me. Yeah. Jokes. On <laughs> like, physicians are the ultimate freelancers. Right. Like physicians are in like they're individually like certified by whatever state they're practicing in. And right. they have contracts with the hospitals that they work with. They are not employees. Like, Correct. like what? Like. I was so, I was so upset when I like found that out because I didn't know that. Right. And, <laughs> um, but, um, but one of the things that has been very, um, that I've sort of grown to accept as I've progressed as a freelancer and as a entrepreneur is really just the agency and the freedom to, uh, to control how I want my career and my legacy to be. Right. And so for me, at this point, by by virtue of Iltopia and, you know, the powers that I be, I publish, you know, a new book, whether it's in tech or, you know, in the arts, every, you know, every six months, right? So like, you know, one to two bucks a year. Um, and uh, I go to probably, you know, I go to and or speak at, you know, like two to three conferences a year, right? And so, uh, and so that's pretty, that's been pretty consistent since I started medical school. Um, and I, as I progress, I assume that will continue to be, uh, but as I, uh, as I progress, um, because I, I'm currently a MD PhD student now. And so I, I will, you know, at the end of this, I'll have a, I'll be a double doctor. I'll, I'll have like an MD and a PhD. Uh, and my PhD is going to be in, is in, will be in, um, uh, integrative neuroscience. So it's like super fancy, you know, it, it's, you know, a lot of buzzwords and all that stuff. Um, and the goal is to either go into sports medicine to be a traumatic brain injury specialist, which by virtue of that, I would essentially be opening up my own, my own space, uh, you know, whatever research I do out of it, you know, I'll be able to apply to, um, you know, apply to my practice. And uh, and just sort of like further that area of the that area of, of field of study, um, 
But more importantly, it's I was joking around with uh, one of my friends about how, you know, the, in the ideal world, you know, like those, uh, you have those um, like shopping centers, right? Like you have those like small shopping centers, right? And so in the shopping center, I will have, a, I'll have my practice. And then like right next door to like my practice is going to be like a, uh, is going to be like a, you know, a creative studio. And so a space where I could like do all my creative stuff in house. Uh, and have like a storefront because I want to I want to get like foot traffic in and just like have a, a place to like have books and a bookstore or whatever. Um, and then right next to that would be like a, a fitness center. And so being able to, you know, tap back into like my athletic space and like being a personal trainer and all that, because I do have a master's in freaking exercise sports science. And so it's like, you know, have all that stuff. And so, you know, you, you know, you get, need to get your body check. You go to the you go to the clinic. And then, uh, and then any of the stuff that like any of the videos, any of the uh, materials for educational purposes that I would um, provide to patients, I essentially do all that in house. And so I do that next door and then, you know, have that stuff over there. And then, uh, and then if I need to refer somebody out to like physical therapy or whatever, then I literally send them next door and, and, uh, and then have them, you know, get all their physical therapy stuff and really just sort of have this, uh, this ecosystem that I built that, uh, that allows me to, you know, like focus on ideas, focus on, uh, connecting with people and then providing people with, you know, both educational and entertaining and empowering experiences, um, all within that little space, you know, and then, uh, and, you know, for me that, that is, that would be really fulfilling. Um, although I will say that that uh, that leans into the entrepreneurial space because those are three different those are three different entities that are that are cohabitating together that have P and Ls. They have freaking they have light bills. They have all that stuff. But um, but I think that uh, you know placing that in the community it it, it makes it. Um, it, it makes the the philosophy that I have about, you know, how I'm sort of approaching life and everything, it makes that just a lot more tangible. And when people see it, it, it it's inspiring for them to sort of think outside the box and uh, in one like very clear view. Right. Um, uh, because right now it, it's it's a lot better than what it used to be. But like as a pre-med, whenever I said, oh, yeah, I do this on the side, people just didn't get it and they would try to deter me away from it. And then, like, when I got into medical school, it was like, it was like the complete opposite, but like, it was the complete opposite for like, people in medicine, where they'd be like, oh, man, you could do this, there's so many ideas, I think COVID sort of helped with that. But like, the the lay person still doesn't really like it's, it's still novel. It's like, oh, you got into medical school, okay, so we're not going to tell you to stop. But we wonder how you're able to balance your time. Whereas people in medicine are like, this is great. You just need to pass your exams. <laughs> and so then I assume when it gets to me being a practicing physician and all that, the lay person will just be sort of like, oh, wow, this is crazy. I need to, I need to learn more. Whereas, you know, my peers in medicine will be like, okay, that's the person that we'll reach out to for X, Y, and Z, you know, research papers and all that. Cause that, that's starting to happen now, but I imagine it's going to get, you know, exponentially crazier. And so, uh, and so, you know, for me, it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, just sort of just steadying the process, you know, just, you know, following the path that I just set for myself and, uh, not really listening to people that, uh, that don't have a positive outlook on what that future looks like. Yeah. You know, there's a, I always tell my friends, healthcare never sleeps. I swear they're, we're just constantly moving forward and innovating. Now, what would you say, you know, looking back, you know, what is it, about two, three years ago, we first connected looking back, what would you, what would you tell a younger Steven uh, today? Um, you know, looking back a couple of years ago when they're first starting into this uh, medical journey, what would, what advice would you give a younger Steven? Um, I would say uh, be okay with failure. Like uh, I think, uh, I think that's one of the things that like medical school has really made clear is that like you just don't get it right the first time like don't expect to get it right the first time don't expect to get it right the second time like you know if you try every single day for a week you may get it right at the end of the week 
but throughout that process, it's really just a grind that you just have to have faith that it'll uh, become better. Um, and so it's like that. And uh, it's really just like prioritize taking care of yourself. Like, you know, whether it's getting sleep, um, eating consistently, uh, you know, stretching, working out, uh, you know, because that is the only way to just like, offset the like perpetual stress that like you're just going to be under uh whether it's externally internally from you know traumatic life events that happen throughout from uh having to just deal with cadavers and freaking you know real people's problems <laughs> and, and it's your goal to just like be there be present and and try to help them get through it uh you know and all that. And and I think one of the things is uh with like prioritizing yourself, um, don't like change yourself for at the expense of, you know, don't try to change yourself for medicine or don't try to change yourself for, for anybody else. Cause you know, when they when the going gets tough, like you gotta you gotta live with that. And uh and I think I had I went through a moment of that where I kind of just like lost everything that like I, I sort of was used to or had going in. And then, you know, when I, I kind of had, to, I got to a point where I had to like revisit all that stuff to kind of rebalance myself. And I think when, with that, it really helped with like my self-esteem and my confidence, uh, you know, throughout this process of trying to um, overcome just these obstacles that everybody faces going through this process. And so, uh, and so it's like, be you and, and be proud of being you and don't, uh, don't waver from being you because being you is what got you here and being you is what will get you through it. And so, uh, it's becoming very, very clear to me. <laughs> that is sound advice. My friend, do not be afraid to fail, be you and just continue to move forward. Steven Christian, I really do appreciate your time. The provider, the creative designer the innovator himself uh man this has been a great conversation i'm really excited to continue to follow your career and your career path and, and it continues now for folks that might be interested in supporting you to want to learn more about eltopia where do they where do they catch you where do they find you yes yes so uh uh eltopia on all the social media stuff um i it's i l t o p i a um i did my best for like doing all the SEO stuff. So if you literally just type in Iltopia Studios, you'll find me. Um, and then for support, really the best way is to just buy my books, really just like kind of just get, become a patron of mine. Uh, and so go to shop.iltopia.com. Uh, I, you know, I, at this point, I essentially create, I developed intellectual property that allows me to, uh, offload some stress and also in that process, like create stuff that people would enjoy. And so, uh, and so, you know, buy my plushies, buy my toys, buy my, uh, buy my books, buy my stickers. Uh, and that's the best way to support me. Awesome. I love it. And again, folks, uh, for more information, this will be on the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter that you can actually subscribe to by visiting the shades of e.com. Also in the Shades of Entrepreneurship, you can shop our shop. And if you scroll to the very bottom, you'll see the Patreon page where you can actually help support the Shades of Entrepreneurship's growth by simply donating $5 a month. Very small, modest fee uh, to help support the show. Steven, again, thank you so much. Is there any last words you have for our guests or for our listeners? Um, I, I live by this, uh, throughout, you know, high school and college, I sort of have this model that I've been continuing to live by and it's sort of evolved in a way, but like, it, it's simply just dare to be different. You know, if you, if you're different, then you stand out and you have a lasting impact if you're doing things for the right reasons and to sort of build off of that, you know, once you, you know, find what your difference is, then create opportunities to overcome adversity. And so, you know, I have this additional mantra of just like create and conquer. And if you could do that, you know, things all work out in the end. And so. I like it. And like uh, my, my yearly motto is uh, embr embrace knowledge, seek growth, 
Oh, no, wait, what is it? Embrace growth, seek knowledge, and lead with purpose. I always have to look at my whiteboard just to make sure I get it correctly. Yes, folks, I do, in fact, have a whiteboard. All right, Stephen, thank you again so much for those listening at home. Again, you can follow me on the Instagram. Uh, YouTube is actually a new great way. So if you actually want to watch these conversations, you can. Uh, that's another great way. And I, too, am also working on my SEO. So if you actually search for the Shades of Entrepreneurship, you should be able to find it. If not, go ahead and look for at the shades of E on all your social sites. Thank you and have a great night.